So again, welcome to NX for Manufacturing Tech Tips. Today's tech tip is on how to create an NX CAM custom operation template. Demonstration will last approximately 20 minutes, and then we'll stay on the line and open up a chat window for Q&A. With that, I'll turn the session over to Mark Reef. Welcome, Mark. Let's get started. Good morning, Derek. Uh, glad to be back again this week. Um, as Derek said, this is the second uh, tech tip we're doing on customization. I actually expect there to be several more uh, next year. Uh, we know that we want to cover setups. We want to cover the, the, the file new dialog, uh, toolbars, journals, uh, lots of areas here we want to touch on. So this is just really the beginning, I think, of a, of a series. I think the best way to learn the customization is to, is to do it in small bites, and that's really what the tech tips is all about. Last week, we, we got our environment created. And we ended with uh, creating a custom operation template just to demonstrate that the environment was working. So that's what we're going to pick up on this week. And we're going to create a, a different kind of template. Instead of a single operation, we're going to do a geometry group that will contain uh, several operations, uh, tools, and all that. Um, a little bit of review, especially uh, I know those of you that are experienced customers uh, understand this, but we have prospects and uh, new people in the room. I want to make sure we're clear on the terminology <laughs> before we get too far into it. Uh, when I talk about an object in CAM, that's that's one of five things. We have operations, and then we have four kinds of groups, tools, geometry, methods, and programs. And when we create new objects, we always do it from a template. So and then these templates have parameters, they have dialogues, they have a tooltip. And anything can be made into a template for reuse. So today, what we're going to focus on is this a group of objects, being able to make a single template for a whole group of things together that can be reused as a package. Um, another way to take a look at uh, these groups in the operation, uh, we need to remember that in NX, every operation really has four parent groups. You'll hear this called parents. You'll see the location. And these are represented by the four different views in the operation navigator. So every operation has to have a program and a tool and a geometry group and a method. And of course, these are the things that it inherits from each of these uh, so that when you hit generate a tool path, uh, we get the right results. So we're getting you know, the tool from one place and the, the stock from someplace else. Uh, this is uh, pretty well known if you're an experienced CAM user. But uh, if you understand this slide, then everything else in NX CAM becomes fairly, fairly straightforward. So when we do go to create something, and we go to the Create dialog for, say, an operation or a tool, uh, we talked about this a little bit last week. This type is actually the part file where the templates are coming from, and the subtype is what's available. So the question is, what shows up? Because there's many more operations in this uh, template than what you see here. And that's what, that's what the template setting does. We'll touch on that for a second before we go to the demo. Also note that when you do create an operation, you do have to specify the four parent groups. That's what these locations are. So when we have a template and we have an object in it, uh, we have what we call template settings. And there's, there's two. And uh, the first one is uh, object can be used as a template. This means that if somebody uses this part as a template, this object is going to show up in the Create dialog. That's what determines whether this shows up as an icon uh, when I go to create operation or create tool or create geometry or not. That's what the first one does. So that's pretty easy. The second one is a little little trickier. What the second one does is this creative parent is created. And uh, we used to call this load with parent. What this means is uh, if the parent is created, then this is created. So in the case of a group, it's fairly straightforward. If I'm a tool, for example, and the tool's in a pocket, that would mean that if that pocket was ever created, the tool would also be created. It just goes along with the parent. Whenever the parent's created, the, uh, the child also goes. For operations, it's a little trickier because operations have four parents. So the parent that matters is the geometry parent. So if the geometry parent is created, then the operation is also created. But we don't forget about the other three parents. We retain those other three parents. So that means that if an operation has a specific tool, for example, as a parent, and I'm using it as a template, if that tool exists in the work part, that's where we put the operation. If the tool does not exist in the work part, 
and we will create it. We'll bring it in from the template just like we were creating a tool. So we preserve the four parents that the operation had in the template part when we bring it into the work part. So with that, and I know that's a little confusing, but hold on, I think uh, it'll make sense once we do the demonstration. I'm going to go in and create a, a, a template for a process. I'm going to find a process that works, that we want to reuse, and I'm going to make that a template so that I can use that on other parts uh, that have similar geometry. So. Okay, so what we have here is this is the environment that we created uh, last week. If you remember, we have our special shortcut that uses our environment and our resource area for our templates and our user tools where we put the, the bitmap files. So what I'm going to do is uh, fire up my custom version of, of NX 8.5. This is the one we left off with last week. And I'm going to open up a part that has a successful process in it. So this, this is a representative part of a kind of pocket that we cut in my shop. And it's a little bit special. Um, if we take a look at it, this is a, it starts, we start off with a cavity mill operation to rough it out. Then we do a little uh, relief cut. You can see this cut actually goes below the floor around the wall, where I'm relieving the floor against the wall. Then we come in with a, uh, an inward fall of periphery cut to finish off this pad we left in the center. We don't want any sharp moves on that because we're trying to hold the real flat floor. floor. And the last thing we do is we go up and we chamfer this top edge. Um, we take a look at that and verify. You get a better idea of, of what this looks like. So it really doesn't matter what this process is. The, just the important thing is that I have this process. I know it works. My programmers like it. The guys at the shop like it. We know what tools to use. We know the speeds it feeds. Everything is set. So I want to be able to reuse this process for other pockets that, are, that have a similar function. Okay, so it's, it's, there's four operations here that I would need to reuse. <clears throat> 